Welcome to the Activated Storytellers 54th Podcast, July 26, 2007. This week's story is Orpheus, a Greek tale. Hi, I'm Dennis. And I'm Kimberly. And I'm Zephyr. And together we are... The Activated Storytellers! Yes, we are here to activate you with stories yet again. Uh, last week we got to tour Hershey Park and eat all the chocolate up, and we told you a story that was uh, from Holland that was requested. And if you'd like to make a request, you can give us a call at 206 206- 3505016 we do do folk tales so if you have an idea for a folk tale that you'd like to see or like to hear activated give us a call so how many of you got the new harry potter book this week me 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 this week we drove across New Jersey and on into Massachusetts, uh, went through Connecticut, and if you blinked, you missed Rhode Island. But we did stop in New Jersey, and we went to one of the all-nighter Harry Potter pick-up-your-book parties. Yes, we did, and we stood in line and got our book probably about 12.30 at night, so we didn't do too badly, considering we didn't have a copy reserved. Yes, and when we got to Massachusetts, we picked up a special guest who's going to be with us this week. You want to introduce her? I think she's perfectly capable of introducing herself. You know who you are, don't you? I'm Keisha. I'm a friend of Zephyr's. I met him at Not Back to School Camp last year. And that was out in Oregon, right? She's going to all of the sessions of camp this year, though. There's two in Oregon and one in Vermont. And you're going to all of them because you have more time and money than I do. So <laughs> um, We decided to, that this week we would be uh, focusing on the Harry Potter stories since they are number seven came out this week. And you have read Harry Potter, right? I have read all of them except for number seven. And I'm making Zephyr not tell me what happens because he's finished them and he keeps taunting me and telling me that he's going to tell me what happens in the end. And he knows he will be tickled if that happens. So he's not... <laughs> You better not tell anybody. We're not going to give away any secrets this week, but we do want to talk about the folklore behind Harry Potter. That's right. Many people think of J.K. Rowling as a very original author, and she is, but she also borrows quite a bit from folklore and from Greek mythology. Quite a few of the magical creatures that appear in Harry Potter have been around for ages in, in folklore. For example, the griffin. Oh, what do you know about the griffin? Absolutely nothing. Tell us about the griffin. Well, the griffin has the, if I see if I remember this correctly, the body of a lion, the head of a an eagle. That, no, the, the head of a lion. I don't know. It's, it's a combination of creatures. Also, the unicorn, of course, the centaur, which is half person and half horse. Mer people. Mer people. Had- and uh, dragons are among the most obvious borrowed mythology creatures. Mm-hmm. Do you know anything else of the folklore that she borrows upon? The name Hermione is borrowed from Greek mythology. Uh, Hermione was the daughter of Helen of Troy and King Menelaus. Aha. And uh, you know what else is borrowed from mythology? Perhaps most notably is uh, Fluffy, the three-headed dog guarding the sorcerer's stone in the very first book. That's borrowed from Cerberus, which is a three-headed dog also from Greek mythology. And which is the reason that we chose the story of Orpheus today. And, of course, the idea of the Sorcerer's Stone is an old legend itself, only it was originally called the Philosopher's Stone, and that's what J.K. Rowling called the first book in the original British version. It was changed to Sorcerer's Stone for the U.S. version. The Philosopher's Stone was a stone that supposedly had the power to transform another metal into gold. And people have sought after it throughout the ages. And also grant eternal life to whoever happened to possess it. Cool. Aha, so you do know something after all. I do know something. Thank you for that, (laughs) Zephyr. Oh, and of course, there are all kinds of other creatures that are borrowed from folklore. The giants, the elves, the gnomes, and so on. And also, of course, Rowling is obviously pretty familiar with Latin because if if you look at some of the characters' names, their names are clues. If you're familiar with Latin, their their names are clues to what kind of character they are. For example, Lupin, Professor Lupin. Werewolf. Yes. Lupin comes from the Latin word for wolf. Uh, Sirius Black. Sirius is the Latin word for dog. Ah, and he turns into a dog. He turns into a black dog. Exactly. Clever in-jokes. Yes. Well, this week's story, as we said, is Orpheus. Once upon a time... There was a gentleman who loved to play the liar. No, no, I don't I don't lie. I don't even play to be a liar. No, 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 no. A liar is an instrument with strings, sort of like a harp. Ah, of course, you mean this thing. 
Yes, and he was very good at it. Good, man. You should see my mosh pits. Well, he was also married to a lovely lady named Eurydice. Hello, I'm a very lovely woman married to someone who likes to play a lot of instruments and have a lot of mosh pits. Now, Orpheus was known throughout Greece for his beautiful music. In fact, he played so wonderfully that he enchanted the wild beasts and even charmed the socks off of the rocks. That's pretty well with the young ladies, too. And he was quite fond of his wife, Eurydice. Ah, but I am so fond of my wife, Eurydice. I don't know what I would do if anything ever happened to her. Well, unfortunately, one day something did happen to her. She was out walking along, and along came a long snake. Well, she didn't like snakes. I really do not like snakes. Suffering succotash. Do you have a problem? Um... Yes, a little bit. I wish that you would just go a little bit further away from me and hiss somewhere else. Well, I'm hungry, and your flesh looks good. I have a sandwich in my bag if you'd like that instead. But by the time she said that, he had already bitten her. Ow! I told you I have a sandwich! What's wrong with the sandwich? You tasted terrible. I'm out of here. But what am I supposed to do now? I have a giant snake bite mark in my arm, and I can't even reach my sandwich because my arm hurts now. Well, Eurydice didn't have to worry about her sandwich for long because she died. Uh, uh, and Orpheus was very, very upset. Ah, I'm going to trash the place, man. My old lady's gone. <laughs> Maybe you should, like, write a song or something, man. Oh, where, oh, where is my Eurydice? No, no, I don't like that. Well, Orpheus decided to stop playing his lyre. He was so sad. Dude, what happened to your lyre, man? Yeah, like, Orpheus, you should really, like, play, you know? Oh, the spirit just hasn't moved me since my wife died. Yeah, well, no mosh pits have moved me since your wife died, man. Like, maybe you should do something about it. What can I do, man? I can't even write songs anymore. Well, Orpheus decided that he would do something about it. The only thing to do was to go down to the underworld. Is that some kind of club? More or less. So, he packed his lyre, and off he went. I've never been down here before, man. This is spooky. Oh, what, what? What's that? What's that noise? <laughs> this is weird. That dog has three heads. <laughs> Who is trying to get across here? Uh, it's just me, Orpheus. You know, the the musician cat. I, I need to go down and see my wife, and she's kind of uh, deceased. No one shall enter here. Well, I'll play you a tune. How's this? You guys are off key. Cerberus, the three-headed dog, was lulled to sleep by the beautiful music coming from Orpheus's lyre. <laughs> You snore. Oh, boy. Hope I don't have any more obstacles like that. Let's see. Oh, there's a river. I think it's Styx. Oh, man, that's where the band got their name. Wow. How do I know it's the river Styx? Because it's full of matchsticks. Oh, that ferry boat. It's a skeleton on the ferry boat. Yes, it was Charon, the ferryman across the river Styx. Your payment. A pay payment? I, I didn't know I had to pay. Uh, I tell you what. I can't pay. I'm only a musician, but I can play. Well, Karen was enchanted by the music and ferried him across the river Styx. The other side. Oh, thank you. Now, uh, w w which way to the palace of uh, Hades? Okay, you're going to go forward up the hill, past the turkey hill, take a left by the McDonald's, and then a right by the Dunkin' Donuts, and then it'll be two more blocks on your left. You can't miss it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I should have known there'd be a McDonald's in this place. Oh, there's the palace. Oh, Hades! Hades! What? 
Oh, Hades, listen, uh, I, I hate to, to ask you this, but, uh, well, you know, if, now if you, you can say no if you want to. I mean, well, I, I, you may not want to say no, but anyway, I, I, here's, here's the thing. See, well, okay, it's like this. You see, I, 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 lost, I lost my, well, okay. Uh, what do you want? Why, 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 why? Come on, I don't have all day. I got plenty of dead people to take care of. Yeah, well, how about if I take one off your hands? Uh, can Eurydice come back with me? <laughs> You're funny. I'm sorry, the position for court jester of the royal palace is closed. Oh, hmm. Maybe if I play on my lyre. What is that thing and how do you turn it off? Oh, you don't like it? Well, I, I'll stop if you'll let Eurydice come back with me. Okay, oh, oh, alright, alright, all right, fine, fine. But wait, there is a catch. Oh, they're always fine print. You can take her back with you on the one condition that whatever you do, you do not look back at her until you are safely above the surface. Oh, it's a snap. Oh, you're in a sea. Honey, is that you? Well, I don't know of anyone else who carries around one of these things. Oh, come on. You have to follow me up, and I can't turn to look at you until we're up there. Okay, but do you happen to have any food? I, I lost my sandwich. No, we'll, we'll eat when we get up there. And so they made their way away from Hades, back across the river, Styx, and tiptoed past the sleeping dog. Oh, we're almost there. Hey, I can see daylight up ahead. Oh, I wonder if she's still behind me. This is nuts. i got to turn and look. Oh, but we're almost there. But on the other hand, almost is just as good as being there, right? Hey, maybe it'll be okay if I just look out of one eye. Eurydice! Ta-da! What are you doing? Don't you men have any patience? Oh, honey. Come on, back to the resort, dear. Oh, no, but hey, listen, I didn't mean to. It was accidental. I just, I tripped, it, you know, and my neck just kind of snapped around and, and... But it was too late. Eurydice was gone forever this time. And from then on, Orpheus invented a genre of music known as emo. And that's the story of Orpheus from Greek mythology. Yeah, it's a bit far from Greek mythology the way we did it, but it's the same story generally. And that is where J.K. Rowling found her three-headed dog. Her three-headed dog, Fluffy, which is in Greek mythology, Cerberus. Uh, now, that story appears in in a different form on our album, Out of the Bag. A more professional version is on Out of the Bag. This one was just thrown together. And we'd like to thank Keisha, of course, for helping us throw it together. You're very welcome. That was cool. You did a great job. Okay, so what do we have happening this week? Shows, shows, and more shows. We're in Massachusetts from now until August, except for a couple of times when we fly out to California. And we are also booking shows in the Florida area at schools and libraries. We are going to be touring down there, um, filling up our calendar right now because we are going to be touring there in December, January, and February. Florida and the states that are near it, Georgia and Alabama. Yes, if, if this is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday that you're listening to this, we are in California. We are in the San Francisco Bay Area performing at the Chevron Family Theater Festival in Walnut Creek, California. And I have a trivia question for those of you out there. Trivia question is, what does the JK in JK Rowling stand for? Hmm, okay. Well, if you know that, I imagine a lot of people know that. A lot of big fans out there. Uh, go ahead and give us a call, 206-350-5016. There's also another podcast out there that did a Harry Potter special. They did a Hogwarts Express podcast, and that would be one, two, three. Listen to me, and we're going to listen to their promo for, again so you can get their information. Hi, we're, we're the, the one, two, three, listen to me girls. My name is Sarah, and I'm Nina. On our podcast, we review books, movies, and music, and tell stories and jokes. You can also hear about kids from all around the world. Want to know what euphoria and gregarious means? Or what the song with the longest title is? Well, check us out at 123listentome.com. Oh, and we love listening to activated storytellers. Bye, everybody. See you next time. Thanks, girls. And once again, if you have feedback... If you'd like to comment on our podcast, uh, give us a call at 206-350-5016. Links and show notes can be found at activated.libsyn, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Next week, we'll be talking about what we're doing a week from this week. We'll see you then. The Activated Storytellers perform at schools and libraries nationwide. 
On stage, we use American Sign Language, physical comedy, imaginative props, and a giant oversized book to bring the stories to life. For booking information, check our website at www.activated-storytellers.com where you can also find out when the Activated Storytellers will be performing near you. Read a story or order one of our audio CDs. Until next time.